The 90s were the golden age of female rap and a trailblazing time period for rap music in general. There were so many iconic women present on the scene, from Missy Elliott to Lil' Kim to Miss Lauren Hill. All those women are commonly celebrated and rightfully credited with breaking down barriers within hip-hop. However, I do think there is one woman who's commonly overlooked when speaking of this movement, and that is Foxy Brown. Foxy Brown was initially matching and surpassing her rival Lil' Kim's numbers and sales when she hit the scene, was introduced to the rap game by another great Jay-Z, and is commonly listed as an influence within the new generation of female rappers. So why is her legacy and contributions to sexuality for female rap relatively overlooked? Well, there's a lot to unpack. After trying to break into the rap scene with no success, she met Jay-Z when she was only 15 years old, and they would become a dynamic duo. Foxy eventually landed a lot of high-profile features, from LL Cool J's Ashacha to Tony Braxton's You're Making Me High. She became a popular figure before she even had a record deal or album out. During her come up, she was instantly compared to childhood friend Lil' Kim, but they remained friends until tensions started growing. In 1996, their debut albums were released within a week of each other, and the album photo shoot saw the two wearing the same outfits. The media instantly pinned them against each other, even before their debut albums were released, reinforcing an age-old narrative that there can only be one top female rapper at a time. Hardcore debuted at number 11, Gong had to sell 78,000 copies in its first week. Meanwhile, Il Nana sold 109,000 copies in its first week and was the more instantaneous hit. However, both albums were instrumental in setting a new standard for female rappers that is still seen today. Being produced almost in its entirety by the iconic hip-hop production duo Trackmasters, Il Nana varied in song selections a sleek blend of R&B and street bangers. The album had three singles, all of which were successful for King Fox, Gimme Home being the lead featuring an R&B group Blackstreet, peaking within the top 10 on the hip hop charts, and her most successful single to date, I'll Be featuring Jay-Z becoming her first top 10 hit on the charts in every genre. The last single from the album called Big Bad Mama became a top 60 hit and sampled the classic tune She's a Bad Mamma Jamma. Outside of its commercial success, this album along with Hardcore was a pivotal moment in hip-hop and female rap, with their unapologetically raunchy rhymes, scandalous fashion-forward marketing, and their overall embrace of sex positivity, they changed rap music forever. They had no shame in calling out their male counterparts in their music, and a lot of times even one-upping their male collaborators, and the foundation they laid with their debut albums is still the same exact blueprint used for women in hip-hop today from Nicki Minaj to Iggy Azalea and Cardi B to some of their peers such as Missy Elliott, Eve, and DeBrat. Now considering how major Il Nana was, it should have been a stepping stone for a long prosperous career, and it was for a while until her personal problems started to overshadow her work. There was a lot of drama, a lot of drama that went on for years with multiple people and multiple situations. In 1997, Foxy was embroiled in her first big legal controversy after she got arrested for allegedly spitting on two hotel employees after they told her they didn't have an iron available. After the release of her debut album, she teamed up with Nas, AZ, and Nature to form a hip-hop supergroup called The Firm. They released one album titled The Album, and it was a critical and commercial failure, mostly because of its mainstream pop appeal. They disbanded and continued their solo careers. That same year, Foxy would appear alongside Lil' Kim on the cover of Source Magazine's February issue, and they were still good friends. It's important to mention, they were so friendly that Foxy even shouted out Lil' Kim on the title track of her debut album, saying, waiting for Kim album to drop, knowing it's tight. They were very supportive of each other in the media. Good, real good friends. I take that as a compliment. Kim does her thing. She's Queen B, and I give it up to her. She did a, you know what I mean? She was doing a thing before me. She paved the way. Right. She was the first woman coming out with the little, you know what I mean? The right. sexy things. Right. Right. She did a thing. She was doing her thing, and that's my girl. So at the end of the day, when all the haters are still yapping, you sit back counting out millions. Like, how much you got for that remix? You got a new plaque on your wall? You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, it's all good. Keeping up on these good things. Anyway, y'all, listen. Coming up, we got my girl, a drink for my girl. That's right, y'all. Brown, baby. Uh, that's right, Fox Brown. 
new joint coming out about to hit y'all well her new album we got her first single featuring Black Street yeah y'all it's the bomb check it out we're gonna hit y'all with it in a minute that's how I find my child no one actually knows the true origin or the reason for the beef besides the two women involved. Although the initial unspoken drama seemed trivial, it turned sour quick. They were offered $500,000 each by Lear Cohen to record an album titled Thelma and Louise. Neither of the ladies chose to go through with it. In 1999, Foxy's second album, China Doll, would be released, and it became the second album by a female rapper to debut at the top spot beating out Britney Spears' Baby One More Time. The album fared well commercially and was certified platinum, but was not as well received as Il Nana. While doing promo for the album, she got into a physical altercation with Vibe Magazine's editor-in-chief for writing some dishonest things about the Raptress. The altercation was described by MCV News as hair pulling. Later that year, her beef with Kim would continue to escalate and finally reach the music. On the song Play Around with Lil C's alongside Lil Kim and Diddy, Puff Daddy raps, Stop Trying to Sound Like Her Too, bitches, which was a subliminal diss at Foxy due to their long term comparisons. The subliminal disses were no longer after Kim released her sophomore album, The Notorious KIM, and took direct shots at Foxy, which is a bit crazy because on Foxy's debut album title track, she's shouting out Kim. By the time Kim's sophomore album rolls around, they're no longer friends and Kim is dissing Foxy on her title track, saying, The heavyweight champ female MC, girls say they different but on C, in all actuality they want to be me. This chick running around with this stink ass gap and them fake ass raps having panic attacks. You ain't a star and your record company knows that. How you make all this money, get this far and blow it. I'm a businesswoman now so I'm not concerned. I bet on Lil C's before you and your firm. If this was back in the days, I would have been snatched you. I'm getting money now. The mids in the hood, they can have you. Stop paying these niggas to write y'all shit. For the right cream, I'd write a hot 16. Better be careful what you say to me. Heavyweight champ, female MC. My girls say it's different, but uh, you see, in no all actuality, they wanna be me. Yikes, as you can see, that was a rather detailed and straight to the point diss. And Foxy responded with an arguably even more cold hearted diss on Capone and Noriega's Bang Bang, concluding her verse by saying, You still sound lame, and my name's still Rain. I still pop them thing things and bang bang. You still sound lame, my name's still Rain, and I still pop them thing things and bang bang. And things got even more serious. It went from disses on songs to bullets in the streets. Lil Kim's camp ran into Foxy's camp while Kim was doing promo for a radio station, and an argument ensued. Gunshots were fired, one person was injured, but no one was seriously hurt. Foxy quickly extended an olive branch to Lil Kim, but Kim refused. We just want to stop it. We just want to say, look, let's put an end to it, how it started. But what I can do as, as an individual and what I will do and what I have done actually is Russell and I, um, you know, the president of my record company, we, we got together and I said, Russell, I want to call a truce. I said, I want to have a sit down with Kim and I want to actually, you know, I don't care what it is. I don't care what it, just end it. Let's end it. Mm -hmm. You know, we can even do a collaboration. We can do something. Let's, we're, we're bigger than this. Like we are. I'm, 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 you know, she's a lot older than me, but I'm still, you know, I still want to be the person that has to start with me. Later down their long history of drama in 2005, Kim would be sentenced to a year in prison for lying about her entourage's role in the incident. Since then, they've always beefed, trading rude remarks and subliminal disses throughout the years. And although the idea of reconciliation has been thrown around, nothing has come to fruition. In the year 2000, Foxy was arrested for driving on a suspended license after being involved in an accident. The same year, she decided to go to rehab for her opioid addiction. After the entourage debacle in 2001, Foxy returned to music with her third album, Broken Silence. With Broken Silence, she went in a very different direction musically, blending dancehall and Caribbean musical influences with hip-hop to make a fresh new sound. The album was far less commercial than her previous efforts in her most adventurous album. The album is one of the first of the thousands to help propel the blend of hip-hop and dancehall. The album sold over 500,000 copies in the States alone, but didn't receive much promotion or airplay. The album had three singles, the most notable being the lead single, Oh Yeah, where she opens up the song with conviction and a statement. 
I'm the most critically acclaimed Raptress in the game, she says with her signature flow. The song as the album is now considered an underappreciated hip hop classic by many. In 2002, Foxy was in more hot water, this time around being arrested for allegedly assaulting a police officer in a Jamaican airport. In the following years, she was set to release a follow up to her debut album, titled Il Nana 2 The Fever. But the album was never released because Foxy and Diddy didn't see eye to eye on things. Years later, the album was leaked online and she left her label after the album wasn't released. After Jay Z became a head figure at Def Jam, he worked to get Foxy re signed to the label. She began working on her album and was set to release two albums titled Black Roses and Brooklyn's Dawn Diva. That same year, she was accused of physically attacking two manicurists and refusing to pay the bill. Legal controversy aside, her hearing loss affected the recording process of her album and the plans for release. She later had her hearing restored through surgery, with the inclusion of having to wear hearing aids. In 2007, she would quietly depart from Def Jam because Jay-Z was allegedly not so satisfied with the outcome of her album. Her album Brooklyn's Dawn Diva would eventually be independently released in 2008, after she served an 8-month jail sentence for violating her probation and hitting someone with a cell phone. The album featured a song called Star Cry, where she gets candid about her bad girl reputation. Lord have mercy, I'm so controversy. Bet you've never seen a star cry. I gave you my life, blood, sweat, and tears. Hip hop's bad girl for 10 f***ing years. These lyrics see her take responsibility for her actions, but also lose her being misunderstood. The following years will include more legal troubles, disses towards other artists, and no shows for live performances. Things truly seemed to calm down for Foxy after she gave birth to her daughter Siani in 2017. In a heartfelt message on Instagram, she says that giving birth to her daughter saved her soul. In 2018, she made a resurgence in music on Nicki Minaj's Queen album on a song called Coco Chanel. Foxy has always been supportive of Nicki, and Nicki says Miss Brown was a huge inspiration for her, so it was like a full circle moment for the duo. And everyone knows that Nicki and I are really good friends. I don't have, like, I'm a different artist. Like, I don't feel the need to bash anyone. I mean, the, let the public say, I mean, it's, it's, when, it's, when something is written, when it's obvious that, that an artist is um, mimicking your style after you, it's an honor to me. And I think that she's doing an incredible job of branding herself. Mm -hmm. So as an iconic rapper, how do you not do anything but applaud her or say, great, I taught you well. That's why Jay always wins, because Kanye came out and was amazing. Beanie Siegel was amazing, but Jay-Z's like, I'm the God MC. Like, can't nobody touch me, <laughs> you know what I mean? And when you have that, even with Mary J. Blige, with Keisha Cole, people were like, oh, she's the new, Keisha, she's the new Mary J. And Mary's like, excuse me? Like, no, Keisha's amazing, but I'm the queen. Yeah. And, and then it stops, you know? And then people don't have to have that. Like I said, I just, I'm, I'm, I mean, to me, I'm, I'm just glad that I was able to to, to grow and, 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 and not and not lose sight that these little black girls look up to me. Although Foxy was a controversial figure in her heyday, she was indeed a key figure in breaking through the glass ceiling for female rap. Her debut album, Il Nana, was a standard in the movement. She hasn't received her fair credit, even being excluded from the VH1 Women in Hip Hop honors which had nearly every female rapper in attendance. Musically speaking, she also brings the heat. From her smooth flow to her innovative sounds to her raw lyrical content, she is definitely one of the more overlooked female rap pioneers. And I can't help but to wonder how her career would have fared if she wasn't involved in so many disputes throughout the years. Nonetheless, she definitely deserves her credit for her contributions.